You find yourself fading in and out of consciousness, Ember, in a hazy oscillation between waking and dreaming. Memories of dark castles and dead dragons and pain like you've never felt before come and go in these moments of quasi-lucidity, like a tide lapping at your feet before retreating back into the ocean. You're not asleep, or at least you don't think you are. There are some things that refuse to go away, after all. The dull throbbing in your leg, the insistent memory of things left undone and words left unsaid, the rumbling of the earth beneath you, and, as if from somewhere very far away, the sound of Escher singing to you like he's trying to lull you to sleep. Early one morning, just as the sun was rising, I heard a maiden call from the valley below. Oh, don't deceive me. Oh, never leave me. How could you use a poor maiden song? We are in the Tower of Neverwinter. Tamira Vassan, the Archmagus, is holding onto the windowsill tightly and looking down onto the city as yet another earthquake shakes the ground. She's been losing count lately of how many have been coming per day, per week. She is scared in a way that she's never been scared before. Not scared for herself or for her loved ones, but scared existentially. She knows something is wrong, very wrong, but she doesn't know what it is. And she feels powerless for the first time in a long time. We're in the Abyss, the outer realm of chaotic evil. Shemeshka the Arcanaloth observes a huddled mass of demons muttering to each other in infernal, in low, frightened voices. She speaks the language, but doesn't need to. She knows what they saw when they escaped. She'd be terrified too if she saw an entire realm unmade in an instant. She drums her fingers on her arm and checks a small palm-sized mirror in her hand. The earthquakes are even getting bad here, and she knows what that means. She wonders if she should have done more to help them. We're in a temple, or far beneath one. The air is cold and damp, the walls snarled with mold. In the rocky soil that makes up the floor, a crack has formed from the force of the earthquake, slowly tearing the foundation apart. The crack is long, extending from one corner to the other, beyond, perhaps, and certainly deeper. There's a rising whisper from the great slash of darkness opening up in the soil, and the temple trembles as though in fear of the world giving way under its feet. We're high above Faerun. The sword coast stretches into foggy distance. Up here, there's no sign of the tremors. Until there is. It's subtle, and from so high up, almost silent. Half the continent shifts, just slightly, and the other does not. A long, thin seam forms, bisecting the entire continent, leaving a scar on the world that must be 10,000 miles long. From somewhere, from nowhere, Nagoth slouches upward. Let's give it up for Escher and his musical debut! Nice voice, dude. Yeah, who knew he was such a talented tenor and that he sounds exactly like Jim Murray, the English uh, folk singer. What a coincidence. That's what I imagined when I thought of Escher's voice, though, you know. Yeah, I mean, I always pictured him like a tenor, but anyway. Uh, when you do finally wake up, well, let's not start with Ember. Let's start with what the rest of y'all's been doing. Because right. <laughs> while Ember has been unconscious, the earthquake has been very, very bad. In fact, it hasn't even been earthquakes. It's just been one long, sustained tremor that just hasn't gone anywhere. It's it's pretty low, um, but it, it it's been you know shingles of the Argen Vostolt's roof have been falling off and. And it, it just it has been a sustained tremoring. And how does everyone react? Do we have any immediate reaction? Screaming. 
<laughs> I mean, Escher's like, quietly. he's trying to rest. Rude. <laughs> I need to get my leg back together. Come on, people. <laughs> Be considerate. I feel like Baku is like trying to get to know or talk to Kira. It's like, hey, there's a spirit in me now. That's new and weird. <laughs> um, and then just like, whoa, what's going on? Yeah, that makes sense. Um, you make vague attempts to contact Kira. Uh, it's not like a thing that, like, um, try like trying to talk to it is like trying to talk to yourself. Like, it's a lot easier to just think at it. You're not you're not a hundred percent sure if it hears you, uh, just mm -hmm. because you've never had to communicate with, you know, a separate entity that is directly inside of your brain before. Exactly. <laughs> They're like, this is new. It is extremely new. Yes. So I said screaming, but Vasha doesn't really like let on to their feelings that you know yeah. obviously, obviously screaming right. inside. <laughs> right. I'm screaming on the inside. <laughs> um, Ezra for his part definitely notices. But he's like too scared to stop like holding vigil over Ember. Like if he does it, like who could fucking bleed out at any moment for all of the fuck he knows. <clears throat> he's never had to reattach a leg before. Maybe he did a bad job. <laughs> yeah, mismatched an artery, a vein, you know. <laughs> Don't give him ideas. Uh, <laughs> uh, speaking of which, um, did you uh, you have you had a while to think about it? Did you want to do anything uh, story wise with Ember's leg? Yeah, you should probably have a limb, as much as I dislike it. <laughs> but it's so much sexier. It's like house. And, but he has uh, one skill. Swagger, if you will. He only has one skill. <laughs> but okay. no, he should definitely, like, you can't, you can't lose a leg and have it come back and be hunky-dory and pole vaulting over shit. All right, um, how about this? Uh, Mechanics-wise, uh, this is going to give you a permanent disadvantage on any dexterity checks or saves. Okay. Uh, so you can mark that, I don't know, like, maybe next to the dex field on your character sheet? I don't know. <laughs> I'll, I'll make a note. I'll figure this out. Yeah. <laughs> Just, you know, whatever is easiest for you to remember. Saves and... Saves and checks. And checks. Anytime okay. you need to roll something involving your dexterity, you're just gonna... It's just... Gotcha. It's just bad news bears. Do so, I get in return? Is it sexy? <laughs> <clears throat> um, it'll be sexy once you get a cool enough cane. Oh, damn it. <laughs> for now, you're just kind of limping. But once you pull off that house aesthetic, then yeah, it'll be it'll be okay. it'll be sexy. Yeah. Uh, okay, so you finally wake up, Ember. Your leg hurts like a son of a bitch, uh, but you know that's probably good because it's better than not feeling it at all. <laughs> um, as for <laughs> yeah, as for memories, the only thing the only memory that you have immediately is um, that weird quasi state thing that I recorded specifically for you guys. <laughs> uh Escher is sitting over you hovering anxiously. Um the uh the others are I, I don't know what is what are Fasha and Baku doing at this particular moment? The earthquake has not stopped. Hmm. Oh wait, so it's just been a continuous earthquake? It has been a continuous non-stop <laughs> low-level earthquake, yes. Oh man. Tiny what did, what's his ball. face? Um, Varane said something about like the weak point or whatever. So I think like Baku's gonna be like a little bit obsessing over that because like they still haven't told. Like a lot of things happened. They haven't told that. Like, hey, I was talking to Varane before I, the Davu took him away. Yeah. Well, you guys were busy. You, with the, you uh, feel dragon. like Escher in another situation would be very curious and would be interrogating you, but right now he's like, mm, yeah, yeah. Saying, he's unconscious. Right, exactly. Right now things are yeah. a little bit, you know, in intense. Right, mm -hmm. so to figure out like mean and like what are these oh and by the way long rest this counts as a long rest okay great oh good <laughs> i was gonna ask that too yeah trying to figure that out and also like what is this why is it not stopping <laughs> um i'm a sorcerer and a scientist <laughs> i'm not a geologist fuck that <laughs> wait seismologist you know what i don't know <laughs> uh i don't actually know <laughs> I don't know. Oh, seismology, yeah. Yeah, there yeah. we go. Buck was like, ah. nerd, but, you know, not specifically that. <laughs> nerd alert! <laughs> I don't know what Vash has been doing, honestly. I really don't. Maybe pacing? I can picture pacing. Yeah, walking around. Yeah. And... Pacing, stumbling all over because giant, long, continuous tremor. Mm. Are you pacing, at least worried there... about just... in my leg? Of course oh, I am! Are you kidding me? I, I can't, it. I can't, I can't bring you back to your mother like that. Like, seriously. <laughs> it's a pattern. It's becoming a pattern. She's already, she's already pretty upset with the limp. 
It's like, listen, I brought him back she alive. She won't care about. Oh. I don't think she'll care about the limp. <laughs> okay. Well, I guess I know what you guys are. So I think so. Ember comes to with like a pathetic groan. He's like, ugh. Escher had kind oh, of like. <laughs> Escher had like fallen half asleep against the wall, uh, and the moment he hears you, he just immediately sits up. He's like, oh my god, he's awake, guys. He's awake. Yep. Vasha runs over as best they can because it's still fucking earthquaking. Right, Baku's going to make their way over there too. Like, hey, and he tries to to sit up. Um. Asher's like, don't, don't, not, not too quickly, not too quickly. I had to do some pretty uh, intense healing on you, buddy. He like looks around woozily. He's like, what? What happened? Last thing I remember, there was a dragon and a mouth mm-hmm. yep. and something with legs. Yeah, that was. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. That's... Oh God! I think and he looks down at his leg. It's like, like okay, now now listen before before you before you freak out. I I reattached the leg. Yeah, too late. No, Ember, Ember. (laughs) Ember, sorry, it's okay. He's he's like looking. Am I like? I'm assuming I probably like can't see. Like it's under like a blanket or something like that. Um, yeah, probably something like that. Ember probably or Esther probably got you set up. Uh, you know, on a little cot uh, with a blanket over it. He says. So he like Frank like he like like desperately claws aside the blanket and is like because he's like he's concerned he's lost his leg so he's like oh god oh god oh god and uh, then he like so you rip the blanket off and you see your well first of all your leg is still there that's good progress uh however so there funny. is um reattaching a limb even for a healer of escher's you know not inconsiderable skill is a pretty big deal um uh, and there is like a very obvious dragon bite shaped scar just below the huh. knee uh, and it feels a little stiff, uh, and you can see Escher's like, listen, this is the first time I've ever had to reattach a limb. I think it it went pretty okay, all things considered, like, you have a leg. <laughs> You've got two of them, in fact, and they probably both work. <laughs> probably? We did, range of mo- we did range of motion checks. It should be okay. Might, just, might take a little getting used to. He's so He's staring at his leg like, and he just like slowly reaches out to like touch it. Can he? Do I have feeling in my leg? Ah, uh, yes, you do. Okay. In fact, <laughs> you have a little too much feeling in your leg. If you had to. Oh, okay, good. So I touch it and I go ah. <laughs> you go, like ow. Like okay, it's okay. Can you? Okay, let's try standing up. We're gonna try. We're not gonna not try that up. quickly. Like right now. You know what, Ember is guys. Ezra's like <laughs> guys. We can't stay here. It has been, there's been a non-stop earthquake. It's been going on for, like, six hours. Is the room- I thought I was just imagining it. The room's actually shaking? And she's no, like, I think more yeah. than just the room. It's- Buck was like, mm-hmm, definitely. Everything is shaking. It's called an earthquake. <laughs> Escher kind of gets to his feet, uh, and stands over you, Ember, and offers you both hands to help you up, and he says, gently. Gently. Vasha offers to help. Very begrudgingly, he takes both of your assists. Actually, I think first he tries to do it on his own. He's like, "No, I'm fine." So he like t- he puts one like l- like weight on his good foot and then starts to stand up. And then I would like to unceremoniously collapse to the floor, please. <laughs> you fail your dex check. Um, yep. And she's like, "Oh, what did the fucking say? No one ever listens to the fucking healer." <laughs> and from the floor, I look up both of you and I go, "Could someone please help me up?" Yes, God. Yes. <laughs> I got, I got, I got this side. You get that side. Escher helps you to your feet, uh, and gently, and like, lets you like readjust to the sensation of like weight on your leg. Uh, and he says, "Now, it, like, like I said, it might take a while to readjust, but I'm sure, you know, it's it's probably temporary, maybe." This is reassuring. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> we don't really have time to worry about it. <laughs> right. Where are we going? Are we going back to? Well, like, we gotta pick mean, up your. Yeah, I don't know where else we can go. Yeah, that's fair. Okay. <laughs> yeah. At least tell them that Varane is gone. Oh yeah. <laughs> no, what happened? Like, what happened after the dragon bit me? What? Escher's like, well, Baku kind of <laughs> mentioned it briefly. And... Uh, yeah, a lot happened <laughs> with the dragon and Varane. There was no time. And she's like, well, let's get him into the car and you can explain the car. <laughs> let's get him into the carriage. <laughs> let's get them into the Ford Focus. 
Uh, let's no, let's uh, let's pile into the carriage and you can oh, explain. Maybe on like a jeep. <laughs> Yeah, like, what am I saying? It's Escher and Ember. They're so gay, they have a Jeep. They I definitely know, I was like, what kind of gay car? Anyway. Not a Subaru? No, that's yeah. a lesbian car. Jeep no, is a gay car. No, that's true. That's why All I'm right. getting one. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so <laughs> Escher helps you over. Um, he if, he is like, you cannot drive, Ember. You need to sit and rest. And um, em- Escher takes the... Uh, uh, takes the... like, Ember, Ember weakly agrees at this point. <laughs> I think he's he's learned his lesson with the horrible fall and does not. Yeah. He looks back at Vasha and he goes, get me a spider leg. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Baku looks scandalized like, what? <laughs> How will that possibly help? I need a memento. <laughs> you really don't need more than this. <laughs> I point at your leg. <laughs> Fine. It's just like, okay, who wants to ride in the back with him? Oh, gosh. <laughs> don't <laughs> all volunteer at once. <laughs> I think I would like to point out. I think that uh, Ember is still kind of delirious. Like I think he's probably not completely all there. So that's a little bit what's going on here. Like he's like he still thinks that the earthquake is maybe just like a mental thing. Like he's just not sure what's going on. I can sit with him. It's fine. Mm-hmm. Okay, you and me up front, Baku. Yeah. He, he 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 closes the canvas and he heads to the front of the carriage. Uh, and uh, you know he starts getting the horses ready and everything. And he begins the trip from Argen Vostholt back to Velaki. Anything anyone want to talk about? This is like a like a half day, day long journey. Yes, uh, Ember takes <clears throat> Vasha urgently by the lapels and says, <laughs> "Did you get a dragon scale?" Oh dear God! Like, no, he's like, he's like right it's up so in good. Vasha's face, and he says, "Like he looks at you really intently." He's like, "Vasha, I have something really important to ask you." What? Did you get a dragon scale? <laughs> I just told you I didn't. Did you? I don't remember that. I oh wait, did you get a dragon don't. scale? Oh, no. <laughs> I thought it ripped off your leg, not your brain. Oh no, it's like the side effects of fantasy Vicodin. <laughs> remembering. <laughs> just having a really hard time remembering what happened. I had a really weird dream. What? I think Esther had a good voice. <laughs> I mean, like, yeah, he does, but wait, was that real? Jim Moray on singing. YouTube. Everyone, check him out. He's very talented. <laughs> <laughs> the singing, of course, it was. It's like everyone's like, yeah, we heard that. <laughs> and Bruce sits back suddenly, and he goes, "This is concerning," <laughs> and he just like lapses into silence. Okay, you can't just not tell us about dreams anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Can't I? I should mention it wasn't really a dream. Like it was a, it was a, it was like a premonition. Yeah, no, it wasn't even a premonition. It was like none of you saw it. It was just a, a setup, you know, like a thing mm-hmm. that you know out of character to heighten the dramatic right. tension. Yeah, oh, okay. Right. Yeah, I don't think I remember. All I really remember was the like the earth, the sustained yeah. earthquake. Yeah. Yeah, and Escher singing. <laughs> and Escher singing. That was canon. Yes. Okay. Although I would like to think that Ember had some really weird, like, nightmares, <laughs> and because of the th- previous premonitions, he thinks they might be true, so he's, like, deeply thinking about the weird thing he had with a cat, and he's like, <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> something else is going on. As soon as Ember starts to talk about this, Vasha's like, okay, yeah, no, no just, <sighs> just pain, okay. <laughs> it's like, he's delirious, it's fine to ignore him. I'm saying there was a dancing lich, and I just think that might be important. <laughs> And Vasha tunes out. <laughs> I mean, Exathander was probably really, really stoked about all, you know, all the stuff that we did. But like, mm-hmm. you know, getting his memories back. But I don't think he does a jig. What if you don't know? <laughs> oh dear. Probably for the best. He looks at you very seriously. He goes, Vasha, I have something important to ask you. Oh no. Oh, no. <laughs> what? Okay, and then he falls like that. <laughs> I was like, oh no, this is going to hurt me forever. <laughs> you hear Escher from the from the other side of the canvas flap, but like, everything okay back there? Ah, uh, you know. Right, It'll well, be fine. If you need to knock him unconscious or something, let me know. I've got a healer's kit. <laughs> Alright, anything else anyone wants to do on the ride back? So, Baku's probably going to try to whisper to Escher um about like what 
happened with Vrain, I guess. And <laughs> Escher can repeat it back so people can hear it. <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> and be like, so I talked to Vrain before he went to the mazes. <laughs> uh huh. And <clears throat> he mentioned something about the weak point, but he wouldn't answer me when I asked him what it was. Weak point? Mm. The Escher's like searching his memory and clearly he's he's drawing a blank. He doesn't know what that means. Okay, well, if, like, it's like Escher, <laughs> if Escher doesn't have anything to add to that, God but... Um, well, I mean, a weak point would be like a way in, wouldn't it? A way it? in, yeah, I mean, so that's just something that they wanted to point out beforehand and Escher says this might be a good thing to try and... Like, I don't know how the spell scrying works, I've never had to use it before, but like, can you use it on a location that you don't know where or exactly what it is, maybe? Well, it says, okay, for scrying you can see and hear a creature you choose, it's on the same plane as you, I don't know. You can also works. use it as a location, I'm, I'd, I'd have to refresh myself with exactly the... I don't know. Yeah, where. so I guess Baku's gonna try to, like, impart that, like... Maybe I could try it. <laughs> Maybe so. if you focus on like where Varane was, like you have a sense of him <coughs> and what he felt like. So maybe you could get a sense of yeah, that's where true. He's been. Varane's connection, yeah, the secondhand connection, and like oh, the weak point. Maybe it's worth a try. <laughs> and she says, "All right, well, I mean, you're just, you're not doing much else. I guess you can try it mm. on the road back. You know, until we have other things to do." <laughs> Maybe try talking to, uh, the, you know, the, the dark entity inside your brain. Maybe that'll help. I mean, you might as well get to know them, right? Like, they're in your head now, so, like... Saku's like, I've been trying! <laughs> they're not chatty? They don't seem like they would be chatty. No, not really. Mm. <laughs> it's not like I have practice with having another being inside. <laughs> also, just like in general, you're very bad with people. No offense. <laughs> I say it with love. This is completely accurate. <laughs> they're like eh, fair <laughs> I mean the dark entity didn't seem that great with people either but you know just hanging around whispering like using people's full names and titles like hey you wanna, wanna buy a son <laughs> uh, so uh, do you are you going to try to attempt to scry on the ride over yes I'm going to try to scry so let's see what should I run um, I don't know if you need to roll any- oh, let me just- I, I'm gonna surrender and I'm gonna look up the description. Yeah. Scrying 5e. I was trying to avoid it because I'm lazy, but I- sh that's not a good quality for a DM. Okay. Second hand, <laughs> you have heard of the target, plus five, so I guess that would be second hand. Yeah, it looks like it's mostly for people, it's like, but you can't, instead of target creatures- Yeah, so I'm not- I'm not 100% sure- uh, how like a like a location can't roll a wisdom saving throw, right? Like that's right, not exactly. Um, so instead, I'm going to use some DM discretion on this, and I'm going to say, uh, you like you can feel like like the process, like the process of the spell working, but mm -hmm. you do not see or hear anything. Like there's some sort of missing connection. Like like if you're having like like in a Skype call, you're connected, but the screen is black. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. <laughs> So Baku's gonna be like, well, nothing happened. And she's like, so yeah, let's just give up forever. That's probably the best. Difficult. Can you hear anything? Uh, no, you cannot hear or see anything, Baku. Mm. You know, Kira, well, if you were gonna talk to me now, would be a great time. <laughs> hey, um, didn't, I mean, we, mm, no, never mind. <laughs> I was gonna say, didn't we let, no, we didn't let any of those cultists escape. We don't know anybody that would be there still. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's my bad. We should know who let the cultists escape, Vasha. It should be you. Shut <laughs> up. I know. You're unconscious, Ember. <laughs> yeah, like, you're unconscious. Be quiet. <laughs> Ember's like, I'm not unconscious. That's just like, I can change that. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like, but you could be. Uh, okay, uh, so... Uh, you, There's no limitation on how many times you can try it, Baku. So I imagine, like... I don't know, maybe you, like, you give it a couple more tries yeah, on the ride like, over? Yeah, I'm gonna keep trying and, like, well, the first and time it works, so I'm gonna keep yeah, seeing you, if I can. You pretty much get the same result uh, every time. Mm -hmm. It's like, you can feel the spell working, but just, there's nothing. There's just, you don't hear anything. Yeah. Um, 
So let's skip ahead to when you arrive back at Volaki. Uh, when you uh, pull the carriage up, you almost don't recognize the building because um, directly in front of the building now, there is what looks like a garden full of sunflowers. Oh. Um, like it is like, and this is not a hospitable, like temperate zone for sunflowers. And also it's like in the early winter. So you're not 100% sure how they're growing like this. Uh, and when you all climb out of the carriage, you see little baby Ander uh, waddling around in this little front garden. And he every now and then he'll like smack the ground with both hands and a new sunflower <laughs> will just spoop, just oh, pop okay. out of the ground. How, how big is baby Ander now? Like what age does... does he look looks like? like he's probably six months old now. <laughs> and he is just having a grand old time just making <laughs> sunflowers happen. <laughs> Like yay! <laughs> Ember, when he gets out of the carriage, looks around and is like, "Am I still asleep?" <laughs> Escher's nope, like, "You are no, definitely awake. No, Feel your leg." Awake, yeah. We all see this. Escher uh, heads over to little baby Ander and he's like, "Hey, buddy!" Uh, the, the baby Ander looks up at him, just the biggest smile. He says, "You, you making flowers?" <laughs> and Ander <laughs> smacks the ground again, and two more sunflowers oh, sprout boy. up. And he's like, "Okay." <laughs> Um, that's okay. I mean, it, it looks great. You did a great job. <laughs> and he, like, he picks not, Ander not up. Not terribly subtle, but, you know. <laughs> and he, like, picks baby Ander up and carries him back inside. The front door is open, and you can see uh, Mama Tremaine inside. She she must have been keeping an eye on him. Um, yeah. Uh, through, she's, in, she's making something in the little uh, communal kitchen. Escher comes in with uh, baby Ander on his hip, and Mother Tremaine looks up. He says, oh, thank God you're back. The earthquakes, you, the earthquakes have not stopped, by the way. Uh, she stands up, she wipes uh, her hands, she's been cooking something off on her apron. She says, do you know what's been happening? The earthquakes, they haven't stopped. They sure haven't. <laughs> He's like, I was sort of hoping you would know. Yeah, it's probably what we've been working to avoid, if I had to take a guess. Says, oh, well, that's... um." Yeah. Yeah. Reassuring. <laughs> Are you guys all right? You seem a little worse for wear. Ember hasn't come in yet. I think he takes this moment to appear in the doorway. This, oh, sweetheart, there you are. Are you are you all right? You seem... I like limp heavily towards her. I'm like, it's it's fine. It's fine, mother. What happened, there was what happened to your leg? With a dragon. A dragon? Time. Yeah. A small dragon. Well, that's... <laughs> Bullshit. And she's like, just it was like, not a small off. dragon. <laughs> he's like, he doesn't want to upset his mother. So he's like, it was tiny. There was a tiny dragon. It was an it ancient undead silver dragon. Mother. It was an ancient undead silver dragon, Escher says. And Mama Tremaine is like, what? <laughs> we you... didn't really choose to do it. <laughs> this, oh my, are you, are you okay? Uh, sit down and she's like <laughs> steering ember over to this chair and like forcing him to sit down ember's like like normally he would fight but he just kind of tiredly is like okay and he just sits down heavily and uh she immediately rolls up uh, paladins generally like they have some healing abilities although um they're mostly like it's mostly like clerics and druids and you know a little that are a little bit better wouldn't know it from ember's use of his healing abilities but <laughs> Yeah. I actually do have a fair amount, I just don't use them. <laughs> yeah, paladins do have a couple healing abilities, but you, you wouldn't know it. Um, <laughs> Not since the winery. <laughs> uh, so she kind of pushes the the, uh, the sleeve of your leg up, and she's like, oh god, Ember. And it's just like, I managed to reattach the leg. And she's like, you reattach the leg? And he's like, okay, I should have I should have come into that from a different angle. <laughs> like she's yeah. Like, no, no. <laughs> Why? It's it's fine, mom. It's fine. It's all fine. My, my he see Escher did a great job. My leg is back onto my body where it belongs. <laughs> she is like everything is okay. She is like desperately trying to keep her shit together because she is in full mama bear mode right now. Uh huh. Uh, she's like, oh my god. Okay, you are going to stay here until you completely recover. And Escher's like, I don't know if we have no, that I kind of time. Not no. Yeah. There's a lot of earthquakes going on. We don't. We don't have time for that. Uh, It'll be okay. Escher, it's mostly reattached. <laughs> Escher says, "Have we? Have you heard anything from Mordenkainen and Moran?" Uh, and uh, Mama Tremaine, uh, she flinches and she says, uh, "No, they've they've been down there. I, I haven't even heard a word from them." 
And then she says, all right, well, I mean, maybe if one of us feels particularly brave, we can go down and, you know, check on their progress. But for now, and uh, Escher goes over, like, it's like a, a natural instinct, Ember, for him to, like, you know, you know, pat your hair, bend down and give you a kiss on the head or whatever. Uh, but he kind of stops himself at the last moment. Uh, oh. And instead, he just kind of, you know, awkwardly pats your shoulder uh, and then uh, te- heads off silently. Ember, like, looks at him. Like a little bit of longing, but then like goes back to what he's doing, like going back to sort of patting his mother's shoulder. And and you are out of your goddamn mind if you think your mother has not noticed. Right. <laughs> your mom has absolutely noticed. Uh, so you you all settle in. Um, and the moment uh, Escher puts baby Ander back down, uh, he immediately starts making, like, he can also do the flower thing, like, indoors, and, like, little gold clovers, like, sprout up between the floorboards. <laughs> Wait, no, bad. This is no <laughs> Is there any- He's, like, secretly delighted, but he feels like he shouldn't be, so he's, like, trying to pick up Ander and be like, no flowers in the house. <laughs> not in the house, exactly. <laughs> it is not, an, it is not clear if Ander understands what you're telling him. <laughs> He's still like shaking his like he's got his like finger in his face and he's like flowers outside of the house. <laughs> Understand? Outside of the house. <laughs> Ander just beams at you happily. Oh boy. Like clearly he's you know, like he's a god, clearly, and he's very powerful, but also he looks like he's six months old, so it is yeah. He's also baby, yeah. It is anybody's guess if he knows what the fuck you're telling him. And in fond. <laughs> I think I ever just ends up like bouncing him in a, on his knee kind of like <laughs> Like, we can't have any more flowers in the house. <laughs> um, is there anything anyone wants to talk to anyone about? Um, uh, I was gonna, I was gonna say if someone wants to check on uh, Moran and Mordenkainen, we could do that in character. Yeah, I um, was like, Baku wants to go check. Uh, there's on also Moran. the little, there's also the little unresolved subplot with Davin that we could get. To. <laughs> oh, Sha, there is that. Oh, God, we didn't do the thing. Oh. You never resolve that little subplot with David, so there's that. And also, you know that Mama Tremaine is going to talk to you, Ember, about the, 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 the Berlin Wall of body language between you and your fiancé. <laughs> She's like, well, that's an interesting development. <laughs> yes, but Ember's not going to stone it. He's like, like I said, I think he's actually like been avoiding her. Like he's, That's why he's like doing it. Yeah, like, that's so definitely going to work. That's not going to work. <laughs> I mean, yeah, sure, fine, but he's still going to do it. <laughs> Like, oh look, you yeah, have not learned a darn thing since have you were. You never kid. had to avoid hard conversations with your parents. This is the tried and true method. <laughs> I mean, that's fair. Uh, so does uh, I don't particularly care uh, how many of these or in what order we do these scenes. Um, I leave it up to your guys' discretion. Baku. Yeah, I feel like like in terms of importance, like yeah, um, that's like really important. Yeah, yes, I feel the like the actually important one. Baku is yeah. going to immediately try to like find their mom and Morton kind of be like, yo, okay, so sorry to interrupt you guys. But yeah, that's yeah. something that is very important. Okay. Uh, so you know that uh, Morton Kynan and Moran uh, have set up shop in the cellar of the, uh, of the orphanage. Uh, and you haven't actually like been down there to see what kind of shop they have specifically set up. Um, but when you go downstairs, you see this, um, this makeshift laboratory. There's one long table uh, set up with uh, glittering instruments, all of which are of an artificing nature. Uh, You can see uh, the room is mostly dark except for one very bright point of light uh, in front of which is seated Moran. Uh, She is uh, in her human form, of course, because fucking dragon isn't going to fit in the cellar. (laughs) In the basement, yeah. Yeah. Uh, She is... uh, She has both hands out sort of in a, a, a cupping motion, uh, she is concentrating very, very hard, and the 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 source of light in front of her is blindingly bright. Uh, and you can see off to the side, uh, Mordenkainen, uh, who is bent over the end of the table, uh, sort of intermittently watching her do this and take notes. Uh, and they both look extremely tired. Oh dear, I feel like uh, since they can't really announce their presence any other way with a whisper they're gonna try to <laughs> message both of them and be like hello guys you busy <laughs> you look busy but it's important hello uh moran doesn't answer but morden kind of looks up uh and he looks at you he looks back at moran uh, he shuts the book he'd been writing in he kind of motions like he jerks his head saying like let's talk in the stairway uh okay so uh, he heads out to the stairway him. with you and he closes the door behind him and he says 
Yes, what is it? Are you okay? You look really tired. <laughs> uh, he says, the, the, the magical energy stored within the Avatar is... Uh, listen, it's, it's very complicated. I'm an artificer by trade. It's, it's, it's hard and it's important. <laughs> right, right, of course. So, yeah, I think Baku's going to, like, describe uh, what went down with Varain and, like, you know, I, I tried to talk to him before. He went to the mazes. Says, yes, what did you learn? He talked about the, the weak point, but when I questioned him, he didn't answer me. Um, Mordenkainen, uh, he kind of rubs his eyes. He looks like he, looks like he hasn't slept in a week. Uh, he says, <laughs> weak point. Um, did, in what context did he mention this? God, did I write that down? <laughs> it, it was in the context of... Um... Nagoth coming through. When, yeah, it? like yeah, coming through. Yeah, like where where would... where it will emerge. Right, emerge. Right, there we go. Uh so, he says yeah. weak point, well I suppose Well, within this particular context it sounds like it sounds like it could be a sort of a, a, a cosmological weak point, like a, a a a place that exists between the realms that are, uh that is somehow under some sort of stress and he says i don't know immediately where that could be there are lots of places where the barriers between realities are are, are thinner uh, but uh, and he he kind of he falls into thought for a minute and then you and you realize like the longer he is staring uh in thought at like the middle distance he looks like he's slowly slumping forward like he's about <laughs> to fall asleep oh no oh no okay buck is like yeah, like, kind of yeah, gently like you know puts a hand on his shoulder like oh, it's fine i tried scrying before it didn't work but you know maybe if i keep trying it'll be better. this is crying yes uh scrying that that might be a good option yes and he yawns loudly <laughs> uh, he says i i'm not sure i think i think we're closer to being finished than we are to being started so <laughs> Expect, expect some news soon. Maybe this is very taxing on your mother. I wouldn't expect her to, to be able to help you in any meaningful way once we've finished this. I understand. You can go back to doing that now, and don't fall asleep. Says <laughs> it's all right. I've managed to go ten years without sleeping, and you—that is almost certainly bullshit. Like he is, like <laughs> he is still a human. Like there's all, there's no way. Uh. But yeah, he. Uh, like, that doesn't seem right by human standards, but okay. <laughs> like that's probably a lie. Uh, and he kind of he pats your shoulder and he heads back down, yawning. Alrighty. Alrighty, indeed. Uh, do we want to do any other scenes, Vasha Bueller? <laughs> <I never know. laughs> Is there anything else Vasha might be wants to do? I mean, <laughs> wants to? No. I know. It's like maybe Baku should go find Vasha and be like, hey. <laughs> <laughs> So I want to establish that at some point um, in the past several days, weeks, whatever, um, Vasha has talked with Baku about mm. wanting to forgive Davin and everything, like not knowing where they stand, but still like they do still feel bad that like they just walked out and just kind of gave up on trying to forgive him because that's not really character growth. That's just, you know, <laughs> stagnation. But also, like, they're not good with talking Even about <laughs> They're not good with talking. Shit. They're not good with talking. I feel like that's probably. Yeah, right. I mean, yeah, basically. None of us are good at talking. Oh, God, what a terrible. Escher is very good oh, at talking. Come on. Come on, Mr. I am Ember Tremaine. Lord yeah, I never. Tremaine. Some of us never oh, stop yeah, talking. I'm, I, yeah, this is me I'm good at. <laughs> <laughs> I was just like, I don't know what the fuck you guys are talking about. I'm great at talking. <laughs> My charisma score is 20. Fuck you. <laughs> yeah, at some point, Baku was probably like, you know, I see how that seems like a good idea running away, but also it's a bad idea. And I don't really know why, but you should not do that. <laughs> Because if we've discovered that running away doesn't really help anything. It just kind of delays right. it. 
it's like, like well you gotta do it eventually i don't know emotions are weird and humans have things and it's strange and these guys are breaking up and maybe they're not i don't know <laughs> i was just confused by this whole situation good pep talk good pep talk <laughs> Yeah, so I guess while Baku does that, I go and just seek him out. Uh, so David has been in pretty much the same routine um, ever since they arrived in Barivia. Um There is no uh, chapel, so to speak. Uh, well, there, 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 there was a church in Vallaki, uh, not no more. Uh, <laughs> it, it was. A- I had nothing to do with that. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely nothing. Uh, but he, no, really? <laughs> uh, he has set up something like a little uh, Lathander related shrine, which is always a little weird for him. Like he kneels down to pray to the shrine for Lathander, and then little baby Lathander waddles into the room and like uh-huh. smacks a flower onto the floor, and then he runs back out again. <laughs> It's like I heard you, bitch. Here, <laughs> and David's like, I'm not really sure the like the religious significance of what's happening here. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, but yeah, he's been keeping to his schedule of convent, like you know, prayer and repentance and sleep and prayer and repentance and sleep and that kind of thing. Let's say you've caught him in the middle of the repentance part, uh, yeah. where he's doing his devotionals. Um, I just kind of linger by the door for a few minutes you know don't want to interrupt um like he notices you like within a oh, couple yeah. of minutes like he's looking back and like what the fuck is <laughs> yeah, oh, here's this bitch again <laughs> here we go again and that actually is kind of like the expression betrayed on his face like here we go again like he's gonna they're gonna come in they're gonna ask me a question then they're gonna get pissy and run away again <laughs> you're right you are a terrible person but <laughs> good talk <Fasha>. you're, still... <laughs> you're still his brother and i have to forgive you don't don't rush up don't rush to do it you know it's like you don't you don't have to do you don't have to forgive me in fact it's probably like better for you psychologically if you don't forgive me Buck was like, I don't think so. <laughs> not that they're there, but they would say that. <laughs> and like, to be honest, I'm not even entirely convinced that you can forgive me, Vasha. And even if you can, that you should. Uh, I'm not convinced I can either, but I know that for his sake, for Ember's sake, for your mother's sake, I have to try. I still hate you for what you did. But you're right. It's, I mean, it it's simultaneously your fault and not your fault. And I don't understand it because that's not who I am. But I can see why you would have been afraid of that fight. Uh, he kind of flinches. He has made a lot of showing... Uh, when the last time you talked to him, he tried to make it all about like, oh, I'm just not a good person. But you, uh, the longer you've thought about it, the more sneaking suspicion you've had that it has less to do with him wanting cold vengeance upon you and more to do with him just fundamentally being a coward. Yeah. Um, but he also, because he is a coward, he's not going to like deny or confirm that. All right. Mm-hmm. Um, and he, instead, he just kind of looks down at the, I don't know, Lathander probably has, like, some sort of prayer bead, something. Like, I don't want to say rosary, because this is not Catholicism. No. Right. Um, uh, but he... I don't know, try the sunflowers that he just smacked in the ground. <laughs> that your, your god wandered in and made some flowers for you. What, you're not going to use them? <laughs> Ungrateful. Um, uh, he says, I did love Costia very much, and... My resentment for you came from that love, which is not an excuse, but it does, I think, better inform my actions. I didn't hate you because I hate you. I hated you because I cared about him too much and in the wrong ways. I know. It... He was your little brother. I mean, you were seeing him try to 
run away at 16 year old yeah run away at 16 years old with an elf that he met like two years ago yeah it wasn't it wasn't easy and i still maintain that you know that up-and-coming little cleric friend that ember is insisting on marrying if he ends up actually bringing him back to life i am still going to be a little skeptical about this entire relationship because you are both teenagers (laughs) he says but that said i'm gonna try to be less of a bitch about it (laughs) <laughs> i mean i learned my lesson don't interfere or or in this particular case maybe don't do interfere <laughs> yeah maybe do interfere in in particular ways i won't lie that thing is gonna haunt me the rest of my life i i don't entirely blame you for being afraid of it too um and i know that he won't either uh he just he kind of nods like there's like an understanding between the two of you like you're never going to be friends really oh, like, hell no. there's like there's <laughs> no way that you can ever really fix the rift between you but with you feel like he's starting to accept that you can tolerate each other mm. like either way your guys are going to be in each other's life forever and <laughs> it's probably just better to accept it and right just get over just get over it. Yeah, exactly. Alrighty. Emotional closure, everyone. Let's give it up. <laughs> Vasha. Oh, <God>. uh, <laughs> and that leaves us with just one little scene to get to. Just oh, one joy. just one little thing. Tiny one. Yeah. Just one a, thing. Just it's a, not gonna affect anything. Just a in tiny the plot, a tiny little thing. Vasha bit, right? It's another Vasha bit. Yeah, it's another Vasha bit, yeah. No, yeah. it's not. <laughs> Um, so Amber, uh, you have at your, I, I wouldn't say like at your mother's behest, it's, she's not behesting you to do anything. She's telling you, you are going to sit down and you are going to let your leg recover. You unbelievable little shithead, like sit down yeah. and stay still. Amber's like, but I have a baby and he's chasing after the baby. <laughs> and mother Trevane is like, like baby too. and mother Trevane like grabs you by the back of your neck and is like, did I fucking stutter? <laughs> like there are plenty Vasha of goes to grab the baby and take the baby away because they don't really baby doesn't yeah. need to see this <laughs> uh, baby Andrew slaps you in the, uh, slaps you on the head and a flower spreads out of your hair Vasha <laughs> Oi! Vasha's like ooh cool there is not that much dirt in my hair <laughs> baby Andrew laughs and laughs uh, um, yeah. every uh, every couple <laughs> Ever like half a day, um, Escher comes in and checks up on you. Uh, but he he all he it's he keeps it very clinical. Like he just he goes uh, and you know he checks your leg, he checks the scar, he checks the range of motion, uh, and then he like remarks, "Oh, you've got you know a little better range today. How's the pain?" And then he just he goes back to what he was doing, uh, which you don't actually know what he's doing. I don't know how closely you've been following him, but he's been keeping his distance, uh, so you don't actually know how he's spending his days, for the most part. That's fair. Yeah, I think Ember's still like emotionally closed off and doesn't know. How, like he's like he's very grateful about the leg thing, and I think he's like he's talking to him now, but it's very stilted. Mm. So yes, and like Mama Tremaine has been like waiting for you to bring it up, uh, but also yeah. she's not that patient. So right. on like, like day well, three, like yeah, on like day three, uh, she's just uh, the moment uh, Escher leaves the room again. She goes, so. <laughs> So, how have the cooking been going? The garden's really nice outside, and the earthquakes are still going on. The look she is giving you, Ember, is unbelievable. (laughs) You remember this look from when you were five. (laughs) It makes your skin crawl. It makes you feel guilty. You're not even sure why you're guilty. You just, you feel (laughs) awful. You don't know what you did wrong, but you did wrong. You fucked up, Ember. You don't know 100% why yet, but oh, you fucked up. <laughs> I think I just like, I think he just lapses off in the middle of a sentence. He's like, so the garden looks, and then he just sort of looks at her and looks down at his hands and doesn't say anything. He says, you want to tell me what happened? Told you what happened. Small dragon Ember, I have- swear to God. <laughs> It's just, it's too soon. 
I, I don't know. You can hear you know Foster roll their it. eyes from the other room. <laughs> she, uh, she starts to make a pot of tea and she says, well, let me take an educated guess then, shall I? Sure. You know, I love this. <laughs> Uh, she, love, I'm sorry. Yeah, she gives you like oh the iciest glare. Like she's like, oh, you're gonna get your ass whipped. Like if, if you weren't related to her by blood, she would throw you off the roof of the building right now. <laughs> you know, I've always appreciated you. You took care of the house. She's like, very good. Now sit down. Uh, she says, I'm going to guess that one of you, and let's be honest, probably you, darling, said something very stupid. I would argue that's not strictly true. Then would you like to correct the record? He looks up at her and goes, Did Escher already talk to you? He says, No, he did not. He could have risked his he was going to risk his life. For what? For nothing. He was risking our future for nothing. I'm sure that's how you interpret it, darling, but what did he say? He said for... <sighs> he made a deal with a dark god to protect his mind. But he didn't know what the deal... <laughs> he didn't know what could have happened. He says, to protect his mind, by that I assume you mean... Like, she has a general idea about Escher's past. He never really got into details, because, you know, why the fuck would he? It's a terrible story. Um... <laughs> But uh, she has, like, a general idea of his background, and she's thinking, like, so uh, to protect his mind, I assume you mean protection from mind-controlling abilities. Yes, he says sullenly. <laughs> he says, okay. Uh, the, the kettle starts to whistle. Uh, she doesn't say anything for a minute. She goes, uh, she fetches the kettle from the fireplace, and she pours it uh, over the tea, uh, and she sets the teapot down between them and lets it steep. And she uh, sits down. She's silent for a minute. And she says, uh, your father, uh, uh, he was a veteran of the, uh, the troll wars. Did he ever tell you about that? I know he didn't like to talk about it much. Mentioned a couple times, but no, he never, never yeah. said anything. He didn't, he never really liked to discuss it. Uh, he trained as a cleric in Waterdeep, uh, for most of his early life. Uh, he was still very green, uh, when the trolls came down from the mountainside. Uh, he never really, uh, talked about it much. Uh, but I heard stories from his, his friends and his comrades in arms. Uh, they described it as a thousand, thousand trolls uh, coming down the mountain like an avalanche. A lot of people died. Civilians, children. He never got into it uh, with much detail about what he did, uh, but his heroism uh, earned him a commendation from the Lords of Waterdeep. She says... I loved him the moment I met him, of course, despite his insistence that uh, he was too old and too broken for someone as young and idealistic as me. I didn't care. I pursued him all the same. He was Oswald Tremaine, a lord, a war hero, cleric of the church. He couldn't have beaten me away with a stick. Whatever made him think he wasn't good enough for me must have been in his mind. Uh, she's silent for a minute. Uh, the smile that she has been had on, she's had on her face starts to fade, and she says, The first night I spent in his bed was the first night he woke up screaming. Uh, he was thrashing against the, the grip of a nightmare. Uh, he kept uh, screaming and uh, for someone to get out, uh, that the trolls were coming, that they had to run, and I shook him out of it, of course, and I held him until he calmed down. But uh, the dreams... They didn't stop. They kept coming every night, or so it felt. Trauma, Ember, is not something that happens on anyone's terms. Not on yours, not on mine, and certainly not on the terms of the ones it traumatizes. Love, as powerful as it is, can't heal everything, and it's important that you understand that. Love can ease the pain of war, but it can't unfight it. It can soothe the terror of captivity, but it can't set anyone free. And these facts do not take away from the worth of the love itself or place any judgment upon either of you. You've lived a pretty charmed life, Ember, and that's good. 
but the one you've chosen to marry hasn't been as lucky. As the one who loves him, you need to ask yourself if you love him more than you resent his pain. And if you do, then you need to be willing to make concessions to help him cope, because you will never be able to heal him on your own, and you shouldn't expect him to either. Ember looks up at her and he's, he looks very serious and he goes, I didn't know that about, about dad. She says he didn't like to talk about it very much. He I'm sure you can understand why. And he goes, very quietly, did it ever stop? She's, she thinks about it and she says, it got easier after a while. By the time you were born, um, the dreams, they were quite rare and they were usually milder. She says, there are some pains that don't go away, but with time, they lessen. He looks very con contemplative and sort of was looking down at his hands and he's like, I just don't know if I can afford to lose him. I don't know if it's, if it's worth it. How am I supposed to live if he's always risking his life and he just might disappear one day? And he's like, tears are welling up in his eyes. She kind of laughs and she says, Darling, are you even hearing yourself? If you're asking how can I live without him, then that's the question you need to consider. <laughs> he's like, I think he's, I think he's very quiet and he goes, It's something to think about. He goes, Thank you for telling me about, about dad. She puts a hand in your hair and kisses your forehead and she says, don't fuck this up, darling. He's way too good for you. <laughs> and then she hands you a cup of tea, uh, and she heads out. Rude, I'm so pretty. <laughs> <laughs> Looks yeah. aren't everything. Yeah. Like, good. 60%. Didn't we agree on that? <laughs> <laughs> Definitely a B-list celebrity, which is, is always my favorite description of Ember. <laughs> right. <laughs> Like, handsome. Not like celebrity handsome. Like, B-list celebrity handsome. B-list Channing Tatum. Yeah. <laughs> I tell you that that's, what, that's exactly what it is. He's B-list Channing, Channing Potatum. <laughs> you know, like, the, with the bad, bad blonde bleaching? Oh, yeah. Oh, God. Uh, so <laughs> one last call for any roleplay-related things that you might want to do. I think, okay. Fine. Fine. Ember goes to fight Escher, and he's he's bitching about it mentally the entire time. <laughs> <laughs> how, uh, for reference, how long uh, has it been since you've talked with your mom? Oh, it's been a good twenty four hours. <laughs> okay, um, I've I actually haven't really thought about where Escher would be. Sunflower Garden, probably. <laughs> that's yeah. Problem. Actually, that's a good idea. Um, he's been like. Like it wasn't really like a garden. It was like a it was like a six month old wandering around and smacking flowers into existence. Uh, so he has been taking it upon himself to like actually make it a garden garden. You know, like uh, like maybe move the flower that's directly in front of the door to slightly to the right of the door. You know, and add some mulch <laughs> instead of just having them grow out from between the cobblestones. Um, <laughs> And he's not really great at gardening yet. Like you get the idea that he's just been he just, he has just watched you do it before and is trying to emulate that. And it's like you know he's doing okay. It's not rocket science, but it's also. <laughs> but also, Ember secretly judging him. <laughs> yeah, Ember is definitely judging his gardening skills. Like you don't pull the weed up from there. You have to go all the way down to the bottom of the stem. <laughs> And I'm just like, oh god, I'm sorry, I don't, I don't actually know what I'm doing. I'm like, I'm like, he's like walking out there, and I'm like, I'm sitting there, and I'm like muttering to myself quietly because I still don't really want to do this, and I haven't made up my mind. It's a lot of pride going on. And as he goes out, he's like, he sees the like some flowers, and he's like, oh, it's not right. And he like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing he, my he, best. He keeps it to himself. He's like, oh. Oh, <laughs> he's actually pull one up and he's Silently like, suffers. strangled, like, he makes like a strangled noise, like, ah! <laughs> Asher looks back at him, he's like, I can feel you judging me. <laughs> I don't no, need he, you right now. Don't need this right now, I'm doing my best. Your arm looks much better than it did previously. So, that's something. Do sunflowers have roots? They I, do. I haven't been finding any. I'm a little worried. I may have killed a couple sunflowers. Oh God! 
<laughs> Ember like kneels down next to him and he's Ca- like, "Your leg, careful!" It's out. Ah, it's, it's, <laughs> he makes a noise, but he's like, so I think he like comes up next to him and he's like, "Here," and he like takes his hands next to like a sunflower root. And he's, like, Escher will absolutely never be a natural gardener. <laughs> and it's like, like, like he's doing his best because he wants this to look nice. But yeah, he has no talent for this. No, <laughs> that's okay. That's why Ember's here. Yeah. Ember's here. <laughs> that's why Ember's here. Yes, exactly. So Ember's like trying to show him how to do it, and he's like quietly, like he takes his hands and is like, "See the roots right here." He does yeah. not see clearly. Not working. Yeah, it's not working. <laughs> but Ember like feels better about it, so he like plants a new one. And he's like, "So you'll." You'll get and he like he awkwardly stands back up again. Escher kind of and, wipes his palms on his pants or robe, I guess. He mostly wears robes. He looks at him quietly and goes. Do you have a second to to talk? He <laughs> He's like, depends, you're gonna break up with me fast or slow, because it's a joke. It's a not a funny joke, so no, you know it's not a really funny you work joke. in your delivery. Yeah. <laughs> Timing. Timing is everything. <laughs> he, like, he goes to, like, he puts his hand out to, like, stand up with him. Like, fuck, like, he's like, oh, like, yeah, like, I'm the one who needs help standing up, Richie. <laughs> uh, and he, like, pulls you up to your feet so you don't have to stumble and embarrass yourself. <laughs> but I cover up for it. It looks very manly. Uh, okay, oh, yeah, very manly. Mm-hmm. So he takes a step back and he, like, looks at him and he goes, I never really did thank you properly for putting my leg back on. I mean, it was either that or, like, have our paladin down one leg. It seemed like a kind of an obvious choice, but okay, you're welcome. No problem. And I, I, uh, I heard you singing when I was, I was in and out. Oh, yeah. Who knew I had such a wonderful tenor? Jim Murray on YouTube.com. <laughs> He's a very talented singer-songwriter. You all should check him out. <laughs> Just like Asher. He's like, you're not making this very easy for me. Like, he looks at him very exasperated. He says, yeah, I know. Would it be easier if I, like, if I said something bitchy? I could say something bitchy. Maybe. Yeah. Try that. <laughs> he kind of thinks about it for a minute. He says, your limp doesn't make you look as sexy as you think it does. Was that too mean? That was probably too mean. (laughs) Ember looks horrified. (laughs) Escher immediately feels bad. No, it makes you look very sexy. I'm sorry. You just need a cool cane. That's all. You already said it. Oh, God. (laughs) He he looks up. (laughs) He's he's never going to forget the comment about the (laughs) limp. Never going away. It's forever burning. <laughs> <laughs> and he goes, I've been thinking that I, the reason, the reason I reacted that way is I just can't imagine my life without you. Same. I just... Sorry, I probably shouldn't interrupt. <laughs> yeah, that, maybe. Yeah, maybe. Sorry. Just, you know, Try to mask her some more flowers. It'd be great. Uh, I said all of those things because I was scared about losing you, Escher. And I... I'm sorry if I hurt you. I'm sorry if I said things... I just... I don't want to lose you. I, I, I realized the other day that I can't... The reason I was so upset is because I just... I can't imagine my life without you in it. Escher says, you realize... That's the reason I did it, too. Like, this is necessary. It's like breathing for me. Like, you get that, right? Like, if this happens again, I don't know that I will be able to survive it. And this felt like... It felt like the obvious choice. It felt like breathing. Like, of course I have to protect myself, because if I can't protect myself, then... What the hell am I gonna do? He looks at him and he, he like walks up and takes him by the shoulder because he goes, I don't, to be honest, I don't think I'll ever really understand it, Escher. That's okay. I mean, you don't really have to. It didn't happen to you. Oh, that's what I'm saying. And I, it, I don't think I'll ever understand it, but I can accept it. And I don't, I don't want to lose you. 
Escher's like trying to keep it together, like he's trying to like you know be his usual snarky bitchy self, and he says something like, "Yeah, it's fucking right. Knew you'd come crawling right to me eventually." And then he hugs it really <laughs> tightly. <laughs> He like gives him a big hug, and then I think so. I think at some point, um, well, no, he didn't take off his ring, but I think he takes it off now, and he like he goes to kneel, but it really is awkward. <laughs> oh. It's just like you cannot kneel. You you literally just like, had your leg reattached. Yeah. Yeah. It's fine. No, it's really it. not fine. Ember, please stand up. <laughs> <laughs> it's like stop. <laughs> he like stands up awkwardly, but he looks at him. He goes, well, "I want to do this the right way, but." We already did it the right way the first time. It's fine. <laughs> it wasn't really the right way. You, did, I was supposed to do. There's no, like, the, that's not how it works. Obviously, I am taller. I'm supposed to repose. <laughs> that's how it works. Asher <laughs> stares at you in just uh, on discomprehensive silence. Just <laughs> one. I really hope that like Basha and Baku are like trying to like push each other away to watch this. <laughs> We 100% are. Exactly. That's going to be on your tombstone. <laughs> That's the rules of engagement. Yeah, yeah. I'm taller. According to Ember. That's why, because that's why you kneel. It's the whole point. Did you not understand this? Escher's oh like, you are an unbelievable dumbass, Ember Tremaine, and I do not know what I would ever do without you. But am I an unbelievable dumbass that you'll still marry? Yes, of course. <laughs> <laughs> I knew what I was getting into. <laughs> All right. He's, like, he's got like a big goofy smile on his face and he like kisses. Aww. Uh right as you do that, there is a very loud sound uh from underneath uh, -oh. uh the uh from underneath the uh, orphanage. Uh the you think for a second that maybe it's like a continuation of the earthquake like the earthquake had gotten softer but it never really stopped. And you're thinking uh, you know, maybe something has gotten worse, and for a moment, everyone in Velaki is frantically looking around, like, what happened? Uh, and it is at that point, you hear the cellar door open uh, from inside, uh, and everyone who is within range to hear that door open looks over, and they see Mordenkainen stick his head out, and he looks like bullshit. He looks awful. <laughs> and he says, I need all of you to come downstairs. Baku's already I'm like over, half I'm running over there, like, <laughs> like looking in shock, and then I, I start hobbling over. Uh, Escher, of course, follows. Uh, even Mother Tremaine and even Davin, although he's kind of like back at the back of the pack, just very nervous. Like, what the fuck like he, doesn't wanna, he doesn't want to. He doesn't want to fuck fair. with that. Um, mm. uh, so you all come down the set of stairs. the The single light source inside is brighter than it was last time you were in here, Baku. Uh, um, Moran is sort of on her hands and knees in exhaustion uh, and in front of her hovering about five maybe six feet above the ground uh, is a large orb of pure white light it is about two feet in diameter uh, she is breathing heavily she is shaking she looks exhausted like we're all staring in like awe <laughs> what, 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 is the... what can we do to help? Mordenkainen says well, you can start by taking the Anvatar. Is that the, the light? Is that the Anvatar? Mordenkainen nods slowly and he says, We've been trying to, to transmute it into, into some more appropriate form, but it refuses to take any other shape. So far as we are able to tell, this is the final form of the Anvatar. So it's... I'm sorry, just to the DM. It's a giant ball of light. It is a giant ball of lights. Yep. Great. <laughs> Baku like nudges is like you should approach it maybe. Ember like looks at it like dumbfounded and he's like, How am I supposed to Isn't it supposed to be a weapon? I was imagining a sword or a... I mean it's, it's Kynan... fighting against the concept of nothingness, so mm. Mordenkainen says we actually weren't sure what form it would take. We we speculated that it might take the form of some kind of weapon. We also speculate that it might shift its form depending upon who wields it. Although, this has never been repeated, you understand. There's no science to this. It's This is the first time in the history of this universe that it has happened this way. Ember turns around and he, like, clasps es Esther's hand real quick. It, like, gives him, like, like for strength. <laughs> And then he takes a step forward very cautiously and he goes, so do I just... And he reaches out to touch it. 
Uh, you reach out to touch it. The moment your hand closes on it, it turns into this. It is a small, maybe like seven inch long, uh, crystal file with a, with a stopper. The light source extinguishes itself immediately. And it, uh, Mordenkainen hastily lights a few candles. So you can actually see what it is you're holding. It ever takes a, like a startled step backwards. Like, what, what did I do? Oh god, I broke it. Oh god. <laughs> Mordenkainen comes around and, uh, with, the, with the candelabra in one hand and he looks down at it and he says, Fascinating. What? Do you know what it is? He like he peers forward at it and he like he's like trying to see what's inside. Yeah, you, you like... like you pull the stopper off, nothing happens. Like you're, you're like you're looking inside. It seems like a perfectly ordinary crystal crystal file. <laughs> well, it I hurt. mean, we're trying to we're trying to trap Nagoth. That's just like, are we? Is that was that what the plan isn't was? That, isn't it like seal Looks it away? <laughs> And it's just like, and we're supposed to do it in a bottle? You know, I, I don't know. The bottle at it? What? Ember's like, look, if this is decorative finery, this isn't my area of expertise. And she's like, bullshit, that's not your area of expertise, first of all. <laughs> <laughs> I'm also not gay, also Ember to me. <laughs> there are other people who are better at decorative finery, he says defensively. I was like, okay, well, fine, maybe, but th this isn't the point. Just because it has a very delicate filigree does not mean that. <laughs> Escher kind of, it. like, inches forward and looks at it nervously. Like, he's expecting it to, like, explode or turn into a sword or something, but it just doesn't. Yeah. It's just this very nice-looking crystal file. Ember turns to Morton and kind of goes, I was under the impression it was going to hurt. Morton kind of says... Apparently it does not. Anyway, while you guys are doing that, Baku's probably gonna help their mama. Like, anyway, we got the thing, my mom's on the floor, BRB. Uh, you go over and you uh, help your mother. She's kind of slumped over herself, and I imagine Baku goes and, you know, tries to help her sit up a little bit. Uh, when, mm -hmm. when you do get her uh, upright, uh, sweat is just streaking down her face and through her hair. Uh, she is kind of shaking like from exhaustion like her shoulders are shaking uh and her her vision swims a moment and she looks up and she sees uh ember holding it uh and it's like she's staring at it but she can't quite believe her eyes she says a thousand thousand years my bloodline has been tied to this artifact i just didn't expect i'd ever live to see it like this and that's just like yeah as a fucking like decanter Defy nonetheless yeah <laughs> Fume bottle. Yeah. How big is it? It's about like seven inches tall. Okay, so it is like a perfume bottle. It, it's a pretty big perfume bottle, but it's more like a okay. wine decanter. Okay, okay. In terms of size. and uh, She uses her grip on you, Baku, uh, to pull herself to her feet, and she says, The Anvatar, it wants... It, it is sentient, you understand that. It, it wants to take a shape that will be beneficial to the one wielding it. She says, the fact that it has taken the form of a vessel, that's not to be discounted, I don't think. Wait, you're saying that I turned it into a fancy glass vial? <laughs> she says, you did, it did. There was some mutual psychic understanding that made it happen I on its own. I wanted a sword! <laughs> Or a hammer. I would have settled for okay. a morning star. Okay. Just rolls her eyes and it's like, okay. She says, I think, I think you're right, Vasha. I think it's clear that this is meant to hold something. Let's hope Nagath. Although holding the concept of non-existence seems... She's, like, she doesn't even know how to describe that. Like, yeah. how do you hold a nothing? Like, how does that work exactly? Like, what? <laughs> She says, do you know, have you had any luck finding, uh, we've been out, I've been out of commission for so long, I don't even know where it is you've been. Oh, we've been around. <laughs> Baka, what's wrong with your voice? What? No, oh, it's fine, it's fine, don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> also, <laughs> what's wrong with your cleric's eyes? And she's like, it's fine, oh. don't worry about it. Baku's like, D deals, you know, ancient spirits, 
Ancient you know how these things work. Ancient gods. <laughs> gods write that. Her eyes are like flickering nervously between like Escher and Baku. Like, is there anything else I should know about what happened in the interim? I, I can see the future kind of now. <laughs> Maybe. Does you can see the future? I can scrying. It's like I've been trying to talk to this spirit, Kira. It doesn't talk back to me. You've been trying to talk to Kira, the secret star. <laughs> yes, yes, that's that's who I absorbed. Did I not? You absorbed that? Kira, the secret. <laughs> she's like, <laughs> she's like, how long have we been down here? And Morden Kyan kind of like consults his pocket watch, and he's like, about four weeks now. And she's like, God oh. damn it. <laughs> Ember pipes in helpfully. He's like, also, we killed a dragon and I almost lost my leg. He says, I'm a dragon. This is not the kind of... Listen. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was undead and attacking us. You just seemed like you Sorry. needed an update. I just thought we were covering all of our basic text. <laughs> Baku is just like, you're making the stop talking gesture. She says, Baku, I have heard of Kirad, the secret star. How on earth did you ever make a deal with it? It seemed like a better idea than the person who's going to be wielding the Elmatar. This why did you why did you think it was necessary? I thought wasn't wasn't the plan that we were going to you would something about I don't even remember the plan. It's been so long. She says, "What happened to Varane? Surely you could have questioned him." I tried. All he did was tell me about the weak point, but he wouldn't reply when I asked him what that is. And now he's in the mazes. She says, she frowns and she says, I wouldn't count on that. What? What? She says, in case you haven't noticed, there's been a lot of cosmological instability lately. I'm not even sure if the mazes even exist anymore. Hmm. This is not something that I had planned for. <laughs> we need Varane to take him. <laughs> she says, it is absolutely imperative that we find this weak point that he spoke of is it sounds like this is the place where Nagoth is going to first manifest. Uh, she says, is, I don't even know where to start looking. And she kind of, and she like, she's trying, like you can tell, like she's trying to search her memory, but she's so tired. She's been working on this thing nonstop right. for like six weeks. Baku's going to like, you know, like put a hand on hers and be like, it's fine. I will keep trying to, contact Kirod. it's okay you're very tired right now mother she says there's no time for my being tired uh and she heads um she slowly heads out of the basement because you know it's been like six weeks she wants to get out of the the, the damp wet right. basement yeah fair uh and david by the way as you as you pass ember with like this wine decanter in your hand like he's looking at you like like he, he was also expecting a badass sword and like he's deeply unimpressed that you came up with like a fancy <laughs> like, perfume we, bottle. Like, are we celebrating now? Like, what? <laughs> First, my fiance tells me that my leg isn't sexy, and now I'm just <laughs> fucking walking. To everything is everything is falling apart. <laughs> this is the worst my brother's not impressed with me. Oh. <laughs> and we're like, as he like passes by, he sees the look on David's face, and he does one of those things. You know that thing dudes do when they're being obnoxious? They like like push their chests out at each other. <laughs> Oh yeah, the alpha male yeah. bullshit. Yeah. He does that thing to David. He's like, got a problem with glass vials. He just keeps walking. <laughs> God. Oh man. They are brothers. Come on. Yeah. No, that's <laughs> that checks out. That checks out. Um, she uh, climbs the stairs, and you all kind of it, like you naturally just fall into place around the table. And she says, "I, d I don't know what to do from here." She says, "I thought." I don't know where the weak point is. I don't know how to use the Envitar. No one's ever had to use the Envitar before. I didn't even know that it was going to take the form of... I don't know, whatever this is. <laughs> She's like, that, <laughs> that glass thing? Oh. A wine decanter. <laughs> I thought that it would be useful to know perhaps what we might do next to see possible paths. She says, I cannot believe that you have a vestige. <laughs> Baku like, looks a little contrite, like, should I not have done that? <laughs> should you have taken a dark spirit into your essence? Probably not the best thing you've ever done, Bakunawa, but you know. Ember looks over at Baku and he goes, we haven't had a chance to catch up recently. 
Have you not been able to talk to your spirit? God? It doesn't really reply to me. It hasn't yet. <laughs> well, what have you been asking it? Maybe it's your tone of voice. <laughs> Yeah, that's probably the problem. <laughs> I can only whisper. <laughs> I'm just saying, everyone knows you don't have a lot of people skills, so have you just thought... <laughs> Buck just, like, yes, rolls and, their and eyes. Yes, and a god that's been trapped in amber for how many millennia has people right. skills. Come on. <laughs> Maybe Moran knows more. What do you know about Kirod? <laughs> he says, I made some study of all the ancient gods. I know that uh, Kirod uh, is was one of the most powerful forces um, and wielders of divination-based magic. I know that, like most of the other primordial gods, it was intensely evil, and I'm not a great, huge fan of his, or the fact that it now exists within my child. Like, that's not... It's not a great feeling. <laughs> Baku makes, like, a Kermit <laughs> face, like... Uh. She says, but I... I don't know what else there is for me to do at this point. She says, if we don't know what to do next, we have the avatar, but we don't know where to use it. We don't know how to use it. She looks kind of at a loss. I wonder if Baku could try scrying on the avatar, <laughs> if it would let him. It's like, hey, Kira, check out this shiny thing. <laughs> she kind of looks uh i mean like so, you, so casting scry on the avatar like that would be placing an invisible sensor on a thing three feet in front of you in your friend's hand <laughs> right so you would just see something in the yeah we have to think this through <laughs> so if varane maybe isn't why don't we try scrying on varane good point I'm trying to figure out where he is that's a good idea. Let's have Baku yeah, try to fix. Now that they're like, wait a minute, they didn't go to <laughs> where the fuck did the Dabu take them? Take him. Yeah, so maybe we should figure out where Varane is and yeah, scry yeah. his whereabouts. You could also try on the Dabu too. That's or true. Both. Up to you. It's um, D and D. It is D and D. Baku's gonna be like, things have been shifting. They may not even be together anymore. We're gonna go with Varane. <laughs> All right. Uh, so you cast Scry on Varane. Now, this spell, uh, the nature of the spell, uh, you know that it will only work uh, if the target is on the same plane of existence as you. Mm. Uh, which, in theory, Varane should not be. In theory, Varane should be in the demiplane known as the Mazes, uh, which is an offshoot of, uh, of Sigil. However, when you do cast the spell, uh, you see a very immediate and clear picture of Varane's face. You see oh, a splatter of blood. Uh, across his face and you see him staring sort of almost dead-eyed directly ahead of him uh you turn the sensor slightly to see what what it is he is looking at uh and you see a large underground lake it looks like like a large chasm uh mm -hmm. and directly at his feet is it looks it's 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 like a horror both scene of a murder of several murders you see literally piles of, of severed limbs of this large pool of oozing blood surrounding it of this large ritualistic circle uh and surrounding this this uh, this horrifying pile of gore uh are cultists that you recognize uh ro well the robes of the cultists the cultists themselves uh all the ones Sorry. you would recognize are kind Sorry. of dead uh but they are all uh, wearing the robes that are very familiar to you mm. um you also see Varane sort of impassively staring at this, uh, and as as the scene as the scene in the sensor pulls back, you can see that this pile of gore is occurring right on the lip of this enormous. It's got to be at least twelve feet across. This enormous crack that runs through the underground lake, uh, and through as as far as the sensor can detect. It is uh, pitch black uh, through the bottom of this crack, and you swear you can hear something coming up from underneath of, from underneath this darkness. And as you are taking in this whole scene, Baku, Varane lifts his eyes and stares directly into the sensor. Ah! <laughs> and then he smiles, and then the sensor abrupt the the spell abruptly ends. 
Oh, lovely. Fantastic. What's lovely? What's fantastic? Oh, I don't like it when you use those words. I know. Actually, you, no, you actually, that was, that was out of character. Baku would just be like really shaken, like, <laughs> like coming back to themselves and like looking around being like, oh. <laughs> I think we're all like, I think we've all figured out at this point that it must have, he must be here, right? Because, yeah. yeah. Otherwise, you would have just said it didn't work. So we're like, Brain's here? Where? Uh, before you can answer, Baku, uh, you are hit all at once with a vision. Um, oh. it, it, and I and I use the word hit quite literally because it feels like <laughs> someone like literally strikes you upside the head. Uh, your vision goes white for a minute and then you have this image. You are being pulled up and up above uh, this ruined temple, which you recognize uh, is somewhere south along the Sword Coast. But as you are pulling up, you can see this crack running through it. The entire temple is sort of bifurcated down the middle uh, with this enormous crack. And as the vision pulls up and up and up, you realize that the crack doesn't go just through the temple. It is slashing its way up the entire Sword Coast, and it seems to bisect the entire continent of Faerun. <laughs> it's almost like the thing I described in the little. Yeah. Right. It's almost like yeah, that. Exactly. It's almost like that, yeah. So we all see that as like no Baku sees no, that. No, no, just you. Just oh, you, sweetie. Just, oh, just me. Just oh, you. Okay. okay. We just see you real, like something hit you. Okay. Oh, that's a good point. I guess we all like we probably like take a step forward and are like shaking you. Yeah, they're definitely like out of it. Like, come, like it feels like they're literally coming back to their own body and they're like, what just happened? We You're, don't know. Tell us what just happened. You tell us what happened. Your mother puts her hand on your back like, Baku, are you okay? I was flying in the air. I saw the entire continent cut in half. The, the Varane saw me and ended my spell. This is bad. <laughs> he says, the, con the continent cut in half? It, that's what it looked like. A giant crack. <clears throat> what continent? <laughs> Ember. <laughs> this is important information! <laughs> I was like, I don't know, it started with the Sword Coast, and then I kept going up and up and up and Extrapolate, it's our continent. <laughs> sword Coast, the Sword Coast literally only exists on Faerun, like there's no second Sword Coast. <laughs> there could be other continents, he's like shaking. <laughs> Fuck his like, stop it. She says, like, okay, well, Baku has the gift of prophecy now, is this in the future, maybe? Past or present? Uh, I you don't know. Yeah, you don't know, Baku. Um, <laughs> right, you're you're like, not quite know, adept but... enough at scrying to know what you're, what you're seeing. And she says, I mean, we would have felt it, right, if an entire continent had broken in half. And, like, as she's talking, you can hear her, like, <laughs> yeah, remembering that for the past, like, four or five days, there has been, like, this constant earthquake. Right. So I guess... They're seeing the past. Yeah, that could be the earthquakes. That would do it. <laughs> so this, did it start at the sword coast? Was, was that where you saw him? Maybe that's where Nagatha, maybe that's where Varane is. She says, I mean, if there's going to be a weak point, it, it might literally be the weak point on Toril. She says, this... This break and she's like she's heading out the door. Uh, she's standing up and she's heading out the door. And the moment she's outside, she transforms into her massive dragon form. Mm. Uh, and she says, "Bakunawa, with me." Okay, <laughs> they're gonna like unfurl their wings and you know go after. Uh, her. We're all like running after them and then like oh, <laughs> or maybe they should just hop on her back. <laughs> uh, yeah, you you. I mean, you could do you can accompany her however you want, but it probably would be easiest to climb on top of her. Yeah, I think that's probably a better idea. It's like, ee, they think about it and they're like, yeah, sh you know, ride her like a sensible person. <laughs> Mordenkainen will cast fly because, you know, he doesn't want to bother. He's, she's very tall and he's old and, you know. <laughs> uh, so she, she ducks her wing to let Ember and uh, Vasha and Escher uh, climb onto her back. And she I thought she was going to leave us there. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> Bye! Um, Dragon, uh, Dragon Boards only club. <laughs> Uh, she, uh, and she takes off into the sky. She is quite a lot faster than you, Baku. Um, mm. but she, you know, she makes sure that you can see her and that you have the ability to catch up. And she soars higher and higher and higher. The air is starting to get really thin up here. Uh, and 
the wind is very strong and you have to hold on very tightly uh, to, uh, to any grip that you can find on her back. And as she does, as she finally gets up as about as high as she can go, her massive wings flapping against the wind, she says, Look down! I really don't want to. <laughs> she says, we look down. Look down. Yeah, I, I look down anyway. Right, we're all gonna look down. You are but almost... But Valsha is fucking terrified of heights. <laughs> they you, never knew this. You feel like you are almost a mile in the air. And as a consequence, because it is quite a clear day, uh, you can see very far. And sure enough, as Baku had described, there is an enormous crack running up the entirety of Faerun. It's kind of subtle, but you can tell it gets thicker and where it gets thinner. You can you can make out, you think, where the center point of this break is. Also, it is a little bit terrifying seeing a fault line the size of an entire continent that was not there yesterday. Mm. Yeah, I think, I think this is all very shocking. We're all like staring at it. Ember's simply staring at it with like enormous eyes. And he's like, he's also like a little bit dizzy. He like leans over. He's like, we're very high. We're very, very high. Oh, I should mention I did grab the avatar. <laughs> yes. No, you, you just left it on the table. It's fine. Right, it's probably exactly. fine. It's okay. Out of the realm of possibility, but <laughs> <laughs> you come back, it's full of sunflowers. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! <laughs> Maybe Ander turned it into a vase. Oh God! <laughs> or ate it, or I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> uh, Moran is staring down at this, and she says, "I think we know where we have to go now." She's asking. Absolutely- Right. Yeah, I was like, we can see, right? You said, yeah. Okay. And I am going to leave it there tonight uh, because last week was um was quite uh, was <laughs> quite long. Heavy. All right. So no pressure, guys. Yeah. No. Yeah. Pressure at all. I originally had a fight planned, but we're like we're like we're not running short on time, but like also I want to really draw this last these last couple sessions out. Oh yeah. Yeah.